Welcome to the Call Center Crew Podcast, where we educate, empower, and help you execute in the everyday grind that is Contact Center. We bring you the expertise and success from industry professionals around the world. Listen in or watch weekly every Wednesday at callcentercrew.com. Hey guys, welcome to the Call Center Crew Podcast. Today, we're welcomed again by the, the gracious the gracious uh, man, Jaden Minkum himself. Jaden, thanks for coming back on the show. Yeah, happy to be here, man. Good stuff that you've been putting out lately. Hey, I thank you. I appreciate that. So the reason of bringing back Jaden is uh, we want to talk about a specific topic today that is going to be uh, specifically to, uh, it, it's, it's kind of a buzzword now in the industry, but it's something that uh, is growing, not just in the SMB space, but also in the enterprise space. And so... Jaden is what I consider an expert on, on this uh, on this topic, which is gamification, and specifically gamification inside of the call center, inside of the contact center. Uh, before we jump into it, I do want to invite everybody, if you're uh, listening to this, go ahead and hop over to YouTube. You can also subscribe to us there. You can see all of our video content that we put out, as well as this podcast episode. Um, as well as I'm in a link to this uh, YouTube video, the Jaden's previous episode, episode five, where we talk about performance management, uh, where we, we dabbled a little bit in gamification, but today we're going to go full in depth um, and we're going to we're going to knock it out of the park. So deal. Um, let's dive in, Jaden. If someone were to ask you define I don't know, just gamification for us, what I mean, what, what does that mean? Yeah. So for me. Uh, gamification, regardless of industry, is um, applying certain game mechanics to work that can sometimes be monotonous or repetitive uh, to make it more engaging, more fun, and provide incentives um, to to get people engaged to keep improving. Right? It's all about improvement. Obviously, if you're gonna, you know, you think about gamification in a contact center, um, oftentimes it does involve bonuses or prizes or rewards. Um, so that's an increase in your cost. Um, but in order to, ju to justify it, obviously you need to increase, uh, productivity. And so, um, so there always not only needs to be the, um, uh, you know, increased expectations, but also you need to have, uh, something out, uh, out in front of the agent that they can see that, that takes them uh, to a higher level of performance. Okay. So now dealing with specifically to the, to the contacts and again, this is for those listening, a lot of times when you hear gamification, especially in, in higher enterprise and, and call center uh, settings, a lot of people, it's kind of, they're kind of turned off by it. Um, you know, they, a lot of people think, they think, number one, the sales reps don't have time mm -hmm. or, the, you know, the agents on the, on the phones. They Basically, the, what it boils down to is two things. Number one, they're worried that the, their employees will focus more on the game and that their productivity will fall, their performance will fall because they're playing games, right, mm -hmm. while on the phone. And number two, like you you mentioned it, is cost, right? Is, you know, what is what is going to be my ROI on, which which I think is pretty much level across everything. It, everybody's want, going to want to know what's my ROI, what's my return on, you know, this cost, whatnot. So um, why don't you introduce us into what you've seen in the industry, both on the SMB and the enterprise side with gamification specifically inside of the contact center, just what you've seen and, and kind of how it's shifted. Yeah. So even just to add to what you just uh, talked about, a third thing that I would add to that list is that uh, maybe a, a turnoff or a hesitation, uh, better said, to gamification is the fact that people don't know exactly how to do it. What are the best practices? Um, should it just be monetary? Should there be some sort of a game involved typically in, you know, in the, in the industry traditionally, um, you know, you get to throw a dart if you get a new right. sale or something like that. And so people don't really know the best practice. Um, and so is it, is it more of a gimmick? Uh, does it actually change behavior? That's kind of what people are after. Um, so in my experience, the, the things that you mentioned are kind of the biggest um, proponents of, of the hesitation at times behind it, but it's also um, once people nail those things down, exactly what to focus on, what to reward with, um, and, and just the, the mechanics like that, that is what makes it a real game changer for a lot of companies. Um, and so it's, um, it's something that people, at least in my experience, are very, very interested in. Uh, they just don't know quite how to go about it. Um, 
it, it's been something that's been very manual in the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, being able to put that, I, uh, obviously at this point can, can kind of tote Clearview, uh, being that is who I work for. Um, Clearview and, and a few other, uh, companies have kind of, um, uh, applied, uh, some, some standard templates or at least some, to some answers to these questions that you propose, uh, to help out with, uh, to help out the directors and, and the call floor managers on how to exactly go about it best. Yeah. Before we jump into those, so when Jaden, you know, for the listeners and those of you who, who work on the calling floors inside of contact centers, you know exactly what we're talking about when we say manual games, right? It, five years ago, but especially today, or excuse me, today there still are, but especially five years ago, you know, manual games on the calling floor. I think every single calling floor had at least 15 whiteboards up around the, the calling floor. How, and you, your stock of dry erase markers was bigger than your stock of paper towels or anything else. Because, I mean, you went, you went through uh, dry erase markers constantly, you know, trying to find an eraser, everything um, of drawn up. You know, I, I remember reminiscing about some of my favorite games was something as simple as drawn up king of the hill, right? Drawn up the, the king mm-hmm. of the hill, whoever makes the sales on the cut top and, you know, uh, the, the next sale down bumps the person down. And, and as it goes down, it, you know, just drawn up stats on the board, corresponding games to those, uh, you know, said throwing darts, spinning the wheel, uh, you know, whatever it may be, manual games, which again, I think they're good, right? It gets the agents up, it gets them, you know, active, but again, does it drive ROI? I, you know, I, I don't know. Having it be manual, I, mm-hmm. it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. So walk us through kind of what the shift um, as, as we're stepping into it. Clearview, what is gamification to Clearview's standards? You know, mm-hmm. what, are you, what, what does Clearview offer? And then we're going to jump into the actual physical ROIs. We'll share some case studies uh, of what you've seen with some of the customers and just all that it entails with gamification with Clearview. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would say with that example that you give, there are a lot of games that people do like that King of the Hill or, you know, you get a balloon by your cubicle if you, for every cell that you get, something like that. Um, but typically when I think of, of gamification in that sense, I do think of a sales environment. And many times when I talk to people in the contact center space that I, I bring up gamification, they say, yeah, but that's a sales thing and, and we're not about sales. Gamification really, and this is where Clearview comes into it for me, um, gamification should be for, for any type of, uh, of a contact center because everybody wants to improve. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody wants to, to cut costs or increase revenue or create a better customer experience. Um, and so because of that, um, that, that's another re- way that the manual nature of gamification inside contact centers traditionally is extremely difficult to sustain because maybe it doesn't make sense, um, you know, to play a uh, king of the hill game like you're talking about if I care a lot about average handle time. Yeah. I right. Mean, you yeah, maybe could do it by tough. hour. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but one of the things that we see is that people just have, you know, rewards for the top rep for the month. Well, that requires somebody to go in and manually pull who are my top reps on average handle time, who are my top reps on utilization percentage and whatever other metrics you want, run some calculations based on who is the true top performer um, and then go reward them. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, um, so in that instance, again, it's very, it's very manual and not sustainable because somebody could leave that, you know, was, uh, was managing that for you. The, just the best practice of how to get it done quickly doesn't happen. And so it falls by the wayside. Not not to mention, you know, you said top agent, well, what happens if I start off my first week, I just do awful. Right. And and somebody else, let's say you do amazing. Mm -hmm. It's like the whole rest of the month, my head's in the dirt and I'm just thinking, well, there goes my shot at being the number one rep, right? So mm-hmm. kind of lose all my motivation for the rest of the month. So yeah, I can see how that's that's a challenge. Yeah. So with Clearview, um, you you get the ability to not only reward people, um, you know, like you're talking about with per sale um, on a, you know, any date range that you really want, um, but also um, do weekly or monthly incentives. Um, you decide as the administrator, the supervisor, um, if you want to reward them, uh, with virtual coins, uh, with achievement badges. So it's more than just giving rewards like that, but for some people just showing that they are achieving at a higher level, mm-hmm. um, and having that be displayed in front of their peers, that's huge. Just that recognition. 
other people, they do want the monetary value, right? right? So with Clearview, you can pay out a dollar amount or we have a virtual currency called InView Coins where they can then go and um, and redeem those for, you know, company swag or gift cards or movie tickets on what we call the, the Clearview Marketplace. Uh, so that's available uh, for for our customers to upload the things that they want to incentivize their uh, with their agents with. And then I as an agent, if I, you know, knock it out of the park this month and I get 10,000 uh, Clearview coins, I can go to the store and, and tell my supervisor, basically, I want this um, and it will will take away your, your point value and stuff and like that's that. That's all done inside of, uh, inside of the software yep. right there on the screen. There's mm-hmm. no... You know, again, I remember again going back when I was uh, running calling floors. Is you know we would have cabinets chuck full, and sometimes even an entire room off of the calling floor chuck full of just you know hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of prizes and everything like that. So this marketplace, you can kind of do away with the storage of that and just have it there online in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. Okay. Exactly. Um, so. In terms of where uh, how Clearview can really help out with that, again, it's it's making the process more more automated, um, and you you just don't have to manage as much as a supervisor, right? Mm-hmm. Agents can do it all. Um, another problem that we see with uh, with gamification is that um, you you again you always need to provide visibility to the agents of where they need to go, who's currently ahead of them in the challenges, something that they don't typically get. Um, you know, if you're just tracking everything manually, no, they don't, they have to go whenever they make a sale or something, they have to, Hey, Hey, where do I stand now? They have to ask their supervisor, right? Mm-hmm, exactly. Um, and some, sometimes it's days or maybe the end of the week mm-hmm. by the time they figure out, Oh, I actually am not in first place anymore. A lot of times they just see the results. Yeah. So it's really not driving performance. It's not making me as an agent want to perform better throughout the week. It just gives me at the end of the week, oh, you took. Okay, so we've talked about monetary, right? The the Clearview coins, the mm-hmm. marketplace. Uh, talked a little bit about the re- the rewards. Uh, walk us through, you know, walk us through what else does does the Clearview gamification entail? What are some of the different ways that you recognize or, you know, incentivize agents? Um, yeah. Um, so like I said, it's, it's right there in front of the agent. Um, they're able to see, so you, I mean, essentially think about this as a, as a call center supervisor, you're telling me as an agent, what I, what I need to focus on throughout the day in order to be successful Mm -hmm. as an agent. And so then that translates into my screen. It tells me, this is what you need to hit on. Uh, this is where you're currently at. Um, and this is what your reward is. If you step up your performance, change your behavior and actually achieve that. Um, and so there, you know, there's always that visibility, but then, um, you know, recognition, um, is definitely a key part of gamification. People want to be recognized yeah. for good performance. So that can come in a few ways. Uh, number one is just on a dashboard. Um, so we had, um, uh, one customer that all they did was show their agents a rankings module, right? Um, who's on top, who's, who's currently the, the top performing rep. Um, for a specific metric, yeah. whatever, you know, whatever it may be. Okay. Mm-hmm. In this, in this instance, I believe it was average order size. Okay. Um, and so just showing that, um, visibility to them increased their productivity, um, by 48% it okay. was. Um, and so ju- just, by providing that visibility and showing who the top rep was. And so, uh, that can either be on a dashboard. Um, our wall boards definitely do that. Wall boards actually provide also the functionality to, um, to display achievement badges. Um, so a- along with my picture and, and if there was a coin value associated with that, um, you can definitely display that. But recognition can also come, like you mentioned, with coins, with money, um, but it can also come in maybe a coaching session, okay. right? Maybe if I'm not a top performing rep, I'm pretty new. Um, and I see you earning all these badges and, and all these coins and you constantly getting different prizes. I want to know how to get that, right. but I want my coach to recognize that and I want them to come help me become successful. So not only does uh, Clearview gamification provide the, the incentives portion uh, in terms of money and, and, um, and coins, but also it could be coaching. It could be um, a change in proficiency uh, routing automatically, okay. right? So pushing, uh, having your different skill levels of, of each agent inside of your ACD, Clearview can then re-rank those based on their proficiency on that skill or that metric. Okay. Um, and so, so recognition can come in quite a few different ways other than just coins. And Clearview really uh, does a great job at honing in on that. 
So does um, so obviously metrics and being rewarded on metrics. Can you can you reward on uh, whether it be manual or or automatic? You know, let's say I accomplish you know ten thousand phone calls in a month, or let's say I accomplish uh, a training or tenure, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. You know, are there manual badges? Like how does that work with with the gamification? Yeah, definitely. So we can do manual badges. Um, like you said, if it's a one-off training or you saw, um, you know, a more senior level agent helping out a, an OJT agent, mm -hmm. you can definitely give a manual badge for that okay. and even uh, assign points, coins to, to be associated with that. Um, and you gave a great example with tenure, um, something, you know, maybe of just hours logged on the phone. Okay. Uh, you can definitely do that and say, you know, once you get to 10,000 phone calls, you're a level two agent mm -hmm. and then once you get to a hundred thousand then you're a level 10 agent right right and so um so i mean gamification if you think about the contact center one of the big um pain points that we see is attrition voluntary turnover mm -hmm. um one of the reasons i think that that happens so frequently is because people don't really leave anything when they leave the contact center that they work in yeah right if it you know if there's five different uh um customer service jobs that uh, call center jobs that are all within, you know, a five mile radius of where I live. Yeah. I can just jump from, I'm not happy. I'm just going to go to the next one. Exactly. Yep. Um, so with, with Clearview, with gamification in general, um, it really allows, um, the company to give the agent something that is theirs specific to that company. Um, so they have coins. If they, if I want to leave, I'm leaving coins behind. I'm leaving this great agent profile, uh, where I'm a level 10 agent, where I get all these different perks. Uh, I'm leaving that behind if I leave the company. So, I mean, that's, that's one of, uh, certainly one of the biggest costs in a call center that gamification should be, uh, helping out with is decreasing that voluntary turnover and keeping agents around. Because then once you do that, then they're, uh, they've, they're more experienced on the type of phone call that you're taking. Uh, you're going to get better performance. And then if you don't have as much turnover, you can be more, um, I guess, more specific on who you want to recruit or recruit, uh, you know, better talent. Yeah. So we've kind of made the transition. I'm glad you, you took us there is the ROI uh, of gamification. So obviously, look, people aren't opposed. I think in the marketplace, people aren't opposed of spending money. Um, I think uh, call centers are typically more, prudent i'll say and we're we're tight with their money because yeah the margins are a little bit lower in call centers so yeah they're a little bit more you know careful with where they spend their money but look any smart businessman it can 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 read a spreadsheet can read the financial statements that if they put in x they're going to get y in return that it's a smart investment so you know gamification costs x amount the return on investment so let's just walk through the walk the the listeners through so i think number one is gamification or excuse me uh, attrition so I, no doubt you said it Attrition is the number one largest cost in a context, mm -hmm. labor in general. Yeah, I would right? say that. The reason that it's the biggest cost is because labor is your largest expense. Yeah. So uh, that's where you can have the most impact mm -hmm. is cutting down on attrition, increasing uh, performance. Because, because everything, else, everything else pretty much stays the same, right? Your, your technology costs... I, I mean, there's some variable maybe to seasonality of agents, mm -hmm. increasing, de you know, agents depending on the month, whatnot, but technology, I mean, your rent every month, it's going to stay the yeah. same, right? Lighting, utility, stuff like that, depending on the season. Again, there's going to be some very, you know, variability to that, but labor, I, I mean, number one, yeah, it's, it is the number one highest cost and mm -hmm. where you can have the most impact, where you can actually make a difference, yeah. right? You can't change your lighting bill, right? You have to have the lights on, right? Yeah. So... I, I, yeah, elaborate a little bit more on that. Well, yeah, so, um, I, I mean, I echo what you say. That's that's where you can have the biggest impact. But in terms of, of quoting a direct ROI that someone can expect out of gamification, it yep. really depends on the company itself and, and what they're doing. Um, but a few things that I would look for is um, what is your... You know, what's the cost of attrition to you? What does it cost you to recruit one new agent to mm -hmm. train a new agent? Um, how long is the learning curve from, you know, day one, I start on the phones to, is it 30 days, 60 days? Yeah. Um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause you right there. Sorry. Yeah. If you haven't done this already, you need to, you need to calculate how much it costs to turn over an agent because some people, yeah. they, they have no idea and it may, mm -hmm. it may cost them $2,000 for every agent that walks out the door. So again, if you haven't, 
go to your CFO. If you are the CFO and the owner and the president and the CEO and everything else in between, you need to pull your financials. You need to know. You need to run the calculations on what do you spend on mar- uh, on marketing or recruiting. Better said, through ads, through agencies, through whatever. Mm-hmm. How much do you pay your recruiters? You know, average out everything else, all your other costs that associate with that and find out how much it costs from start to finish. Like you said, if the training is three days, great. How much does that three days of training cost? Mm -hmm. If it's six weeks, how much does it cost in training payroll, in paying the trainer, Mm -hmm. in, you know, again, averaging out the lights, the computers that they use in the training rooms, you know, average out all those costs, but find out how much does it cost to, to train an agent fully baked, from the, from the time that they walk in the door and fill out the application, go through the recruiting, uh, go through training, and they are OJT out on the floor. How much does that cost? Because that right there, as soon as they leave, and here's the scary part, is if they leave typically, that, and this is a statistic in the call center world, zero to 30 days is the number one largest time period that people leave in contact centers. And here's the scary thing is if you spend $2,000 over six weeks of training and that person leaves the very next day, guess what? You're out $2,000. You might as well have just taken $2,000 and, and thrown it in the garbage, right? It's just, it's astronomical, the, the cost. So if you haven't, here's a call to action for you. Sit down with your CFO, sit down with your financial statements and calculate how much it costs. And if you don't know off the top of your head, you need to. If you're an yeah. operator or a CFO inside of a contact center, you need to know the number on which you are losing if, if an agent walks mm-hmm. out, right? The number back when I was operating, again, this was a few years ago, um, it was right in between twelve and $1,500, mm-hmm. right? If an eight, we knew the second an agent left our calling floor, $1,200 right out the window that we had to retrain, mm-hmm. right? And I think you're getting to this, right? Is not only do you lose that $1,200, but you have to retrain a brand new agent and you lose mm-hmm. that tenure out on the calling floor, yep. right? How long does it take you to train that new agent to become as good as that agent that left was? Yep. Um, so that's that's totally right. And I think for your listeners, um, if you don't know how to calculate that, get with this guy. Um, he can definitely help out there, but you'll be surprised. I think if, if that's not something that your listeners have done up to this point in their business, um, they'll definitely be surprised at the number. Yeah, it's definitely. it's definitely larger than you would think. Yep. And again, those numbers were in Utah, not in New York or Chicago or LA. Yeah. Where everything else is a lot higher. Yep. So. Yeah. So that's I mean that's what I that's what I mean when I say it's going to vary by company mm-hmm. depending on what their costs are. Um, but uh, it's definitely something that you can calculate. It's yeah. it's tan uh, not tangible, but uh, it is a hard number. Uh, that you can calculate to to justify the investment in a better gamification strategy, um, and and you can definitely calculate that yourself. Um, speaking of the OJT stuff, um, you know whether it's you know cutting down on your your thirty to sixty day attrition or just getting performance up, uh, that's one way that we see gamification as a real big hitter as well. Um, allowing a, a company, a supervisor, to set up um, for just those agents these are the incentives that we're putting in place for you in Mm -hmm. these days um, because this is the basics. These are the basics of what you need to do in your first 30 days to be successful at this company. And then uh, one thing that Clearview also allows you to do is have those coins vest over time. So you could say, yeah, week one, you're going to, you know, congratulations for for graduating training, 10,000 Clearview coins. Um, Number two, go out on the floor and over the next three days do these things and you're going to get this many more coins. But guess what? You're not going to get those until, you know, two weeks later. Okay. Right. So again, th- it, it's really just helping people look forward to something just to let them know this is going to get easier. Once you learn the system, once you learn the process, this will get easier and here's your reward for it. Just stick around and have faith in us as a company. Yeah. I think that's great. Um, you know, I, I think for me, from what I've seen, again, this is an evolution of, of again, throwing darts at a dartboard, and <laughs> there was even there was some pretty crazy games. I won't get into a, get into too much detail, but you know, if you think about it, back about the manual games, you know, it, it, it took time, right, yeah. to pull an agent off of the call, off of the phone, to have them come up, to have them do the game, to have you know, and it was mm-hmm. great. It got them up out of the seats, and I think that's that's important. But again, if you want to talk about efficiency here, yeah, uh, I mean. Again, putting it all on their screen, it's all in one spot, it's all calculated automatically, it's all right there. You know, not only that, but it's 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 driving the behavior that you want to drive. So we talked about attrition. 
uh, get how gamification helps attrition. But then, like kind of like we got on, got onto a little bit ago, is not only is it affecting the attrition and driving the attrition cost down, but by doing so, what do you get on the calling floor, right? What type of agents and what you know? Let's just let's just kind of spitball that about what it does to the agents on the floor, performance, morale, bill rate, whatever it may be. What do, mm-hmm. I mean? Walk us through that. But. Yeah, that's great. So. One thing that I would mention going into that topic is you make a great point just uh, just now that uh, for, you know, the darts or the manual games that you run, you, your reward for that agent, um, I guess, in an indirect way is they get to get off the phone. Mm-hmm. Right. That's their incentive. Uh, a lot of times they get, you know, prizes if they uh, throw the dart really well or whatever. Um, but you're incentivizing them to get off the phone. Yeah. So, Which, by the way an agent is that's their number one job more than beyond the phone yeah so. yeah so with clearview um the game is the phone call that's what the game is um how do you want how do you get more uh clearview coins how do you get the recognition you stick on the phones yeah. um so that's where it starts is incentivizing the right way i know you talk a lot on the show about lead and lag measures mm-hmm. uh, you need to for sure focus on the lead measures define what those are that are going to influence your bottom line um, create a, a scoreboard and then the effects of gamification like you said um, attrition is going to kind of be the first one that we want to talk about um, and so attrition in in the domino effect the snowball effect as you go on down the line attrition is going to lead to um, first and foremost, higher recruiting, higher training, lower performance, Mm -hmm. um, that gets, so lower performance being lower, uh, productivity. Um, if it's, you know, sales, you got to train somebody up on how to sell better, how to sell your products better, uh, just lower performance across the board. So in reverse, if we can influence those things positively, um, keep people around longer, you don't have to recruit near as many people. Yep. Uh, which means you can hire better people. Mm -hmm. Training costs are going to go down. Um, And then just the existing, I think we've kind of highlighted it, the existing employee that you have that's been on the floor and is incentivized to to stay there is going to have higher performance as well. Um, So it's just kind of a domino effect of if you can, if you can really focus in on, um, on creating a a better environment, a more uh, empowered environment for the agent, Attrition is going to go down, which means higher performance, lower lower costs. Yep. Right? That's what we're all after. Exactly. Well, Jaden, you know, I really appreciate you coming on again for the audience. You know, gamification, game changer, gimmick. I'll let you make the choice and, and decide. But the ROI and the numbers are pretty cut and dry, uh, pretty clear. Uh, if you want to learn more about Clearview, ClearviewLive.com, you can reach out to Jaden Minkum uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, as well as, uh, as always, you can contact um, myself and, and the crew at callcentercrew.com where you'll find all of our content, uh, all the ways to contact us, whatnot. Uh, Jaden, any last, uh, I mean, what, what, would, what would you say, let me ask you this, put you on this, put you on the spot. What would you say to an enterprise uh, executive looking to make the change uh, over to a software that, that does gamification? Is it, you know, is it something that, is worth the investment uh, from, you know, I I know you can't put maybe put any names to it, but, you know, what does the shift look like? What, I mean, how many have you seen come over? I mean, are there, is this just an SMB play? Is it for enterprise? I mean, you know, walk us through what have you seen? What have you seen? Definitely not an SMB play. I've, I think um, the small to mid, small to mid market, um, maybe has embraced it more because it's not as much of a transition Mm -hmm. because they have fewer employees. Yeah. Um, but definitely seeing a lot of enterprise level, uh, companies adopt this practice. And, um, so, I mean, if I had a, an executive asking me, is this worth it? Uh, will it actually make a difference? Um, I'd ask him about how do you empower your employees? Uh, what are you doing currently to, to impact them positively to, um, you know, not only incentivize them, but help them with, with coaching. How are you doing all of that? And what are you willing to pay then? to cut down on that because once you, I mean, once you really get a good uh, visual of what you're losing as an employee walks out the door and never comes back pretty easy to justify the cost when, yeah. um, you know, when you can see what positive impacts that'll have. Yep. So if you have any questions, anybody listening, uh, Landon can definitely get you in touch with me again, reach out on LinkedIn. I uh, love to walk you through some of the ROI and case studies that we've built. 
Awesome. Jaden, thanks again. Guys, uh, just to, just to uh, wrap, recap here, or just to, to finish up, uh, callcentercrew.com. We, today, we just launched, uh, our, so we're at the beginning of January now. We are launching our online cruise. So go to callcentercrew.com, check out our products and services. Online cruise, it's specifically for call center agents, call center supervisors, and call center executives. Three different groups where you can join uh, myself and the community of others around the world. Uh, again, agents, supervisors, and executives from around the world where it's an online group, an online community where we share best practices, we ask questions, uh, we put out weekly topics, there's exclusive content. So again, check us out. Uh, we're more than happy to, to have you in the group and to collaborate with you, uh, share with share with you and have you share with us. Um, and again, as always, check us out, all the social sites, guys. Uh, subscri- subscribe to us on YouTube. Give us a five-star review on iTunes. We would deeply appreciate it. Thanks for all the support, guys. And until next time, thanks. <laughs>